to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, yeah. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. The wireless woman. You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi Fi's. Welcome back to yet another underground transmission of the wireless woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And make sure you hit that notification bell for notifications of when I upload new content and when I go live. So there's a video. I know I'm late. I'm always tardy to the party. Got life, other things to do. But you're very important to me. So whenever I see something, you know, if you see what I see, I'm going to come in here and talk about it. So there's a video that's gone viral. And from what I understand, people are like doing some GoFundMes and like this guy's been honored or something like that. But he was a Patriots fan at like a game. I don't know. Eagles game. I don't know. I don't watch the NFL. I am on a one woman boycott of the NFL. I heard Kenyatta Diallo talking about boycotting the NFL and feeling like he was the only one. But sir, you are not alone. I am here with you. I've been boycotting the NFL since 2017 when Kaepernick took a knee. So did I. And it will forever remain the same. To one of us dies. So um, I took it seriously. I'm boycotting Nike. I'm boycott. I want to boycott Amazon. I'll be honest. I have a complex relationship with Amazon, and uh, that's for another episode. It's for another episode. But I have been staunchly on my NFL boycott so i have no idea what goes on at these games however this particular video of this woman harassing this black man and him being martin luther king silent about it even in 2022 uh, went viral i'll let you watch it Now, several things come to mind when I see this video. I will start at the top. One is how submissive, fit, feminine, and friendly this woman is. I mean, we should all aspire. We should all aspire to be this. At least this is what we are being told the characterization is based on the skin complexion based on the color of the skin. Now, Martin Luther King died so that we could be judged by the content of our character instead of instead of the color of our skin. But we are consistently being told that coming out of this community are the women that we should aspire to. Here's my issue. For every colonizing, white supremacist, patriarchal, white male that we know, he has been raised in the bosom of white femininity. If it was this soft, delicate, compassionate place, what is the whole Karen phenomenon? The Karen phenomenon, from my understanding, is born of a certain entitled privilege that allows women from this group to be the um, crime stoppers the vigilant defenders of parks and recreation everywhere. You can take all the pictures you want. I am crash. filming you right now. Cause you are I don't really believe right. you. You stole my mala. Don't mama. hit me, ma'am. Don't you hit me. Don't you you stole hit me. my mala. 
I never stole anything from I'm you. I'm reporting this to the fucking landlord. I don't care what you do. Listen, I didn't steal anything listen, from you. Everybody in this hallway is here. I really don't care. Everybody batches a bunch of thieves. You need to get you some medication. I don't understand how, on one hand, you have Terrell Owens arguing outside with you know, a white woman in his community that said he was speeding and he doesn't belong there. Put his car in park. Right, because you're going to yell at me and tell me I almost hit you, and I didn't. But you didn't have to get out of your car. You didn't have to talk to me that way either, Karen. A black man uh, approaching a white woman. And on the other hand, these are the women, all women should aspire to be. These are the fit, feminine, friendly women of the world who take care of black men, who understand them, respect them, elevate them in status. I'm not buying it, but let's move forward in the video. The second thing that stood out to me is, and I think a lot of black women would support me in this. I don't know. Drop a comment if you agree with what I'm saying, what I'm about to say here. But I find it really strange how black men will jump in our faces to defend something they believe in. Like the behavior we're watching here, usually there's a black woman on this side of it. And it, it kind of mirrors the dynamic we see with black men, which goes back to the video I did about privilege and how privilege is the thing that entitles these people to, to be able to act this way without any punishment because for all of the celebration and praise that we're seeing come this black man's way for just not slapping the taste out that woman's mouth for going low when she went high for choosing nonviolence when presented with what should have been a threat. But um, I don't think he responded that way because he didn't find the behavior to be threatening. It's easy to uh, not have a response when the behavior is not threatening to you. However, I noticed that mm, within our own culture, our men don't seem to have any regard for jumping in our faces like that. Now, like I said, correct me if you feel that I'm wrong, and I'm sure there'll be some correction there. But I think the thing that stands out to me the most about it is I don't really think that this young black man, for all of his admirable qualities you know I don't know him personally so I'm not going to speak to his character I have no idea but this woman comes from a protected class I don't think it's necessarily that he would not <laughs> have addressed her I think it's not wanting the smoke that comes behind this woman I think it's understanding that this woman is protected and she comes with her own clan if you will <laughs> if you will of people who will come to her defense if she feels threatened. Now him, not so much. He on his own. He know that. Even the guy that's next to him or woman, I'm not sure who was with him because I just, I haven't studied the video that hard, was like patting him on the, like reassuring him and pacifying him. Like, calm down. Like, don't let this get you, you know. Because this is the path that we choose <laughs> when we're faced with what we know is the backing of people who have this type of mentality and this type of attitude. And I mean, don't get me wrong. We got all the t-shirts out that are like, I am not my ancestors signed these hands and talking fundamentally about what we'll do. But for me, I have long been watching what I call the pacification of black men. Um, what Kenyatta Diallo, and I know I, I watch a lot of Diallo. I mean, it just is what it is. Um, very insightful man. Um, what he's calling the powerlessness of black patriarchy. And we are elevating this as being the response that black men should have to white aggression. Am I the only one that, uh, I, here's my thing. If this is who you are and this is what you're going to be about, then I don't want to hear about black females being aggressive then. I, I find it a little odd that we champion it when he was this way towards a white female, but it would have been, I mean, he would have been a simp, a punk, a ban, a bitch ass nigga, if he had let a black woman talk to him that way and not 
Mm. Exhibited his dominance over her. But I don't think it's the woman so much as the male group behind her. I'm noticing a lot of black men don't want to take that smoke to white men, even so much so they will blame black women for the things that patriarchy, white male patriarchy have put in place to subjugate the black man, like child support. <laughs> because what man should be expected to support his child? I mean, you black bitches, how dare you? But my point is, these are things that if you really had a problem with it, you could take it to the white male patriarchy. You could, you know, elect black judges that would overturn these types of cases. You know, you could rally your common interest as black men as being something that white men had to incorporate into the patriarchy. Or you can just keep fighting with your women because clearly you can't fight with theirs. No, 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 no. But black women who I am always speaking to in these videos, you should take something from that. When we have these conversations about our men being protectors and providers in our communities and not being able to understand why we don't have these things, here's an exhibition right here of what the problem is. And they will even go so far as to gaslight you as to believe that somehow white women are separate from that patriarchal system that these white women are giving power and authority to these men through their subjection but this is what having power in your male group looks like it gives you the power to subjugate everybody to even have male privilege over the men of another community because of the backing of your males and I say that because we as black women know how much kowtowing we do. We know how much we are labeled as angry black women when we just speak up for what is the good and right thing to do. When we just expect equality with white men in the workplace, when we just expect equality with white women. You know, we're, we're constantly being told they're the better women. We have to be silent and submissive to everybody because our men are below all these groups in order for us to get underneath their authority we would have to accept the oppression of every other racial group as well because we see them doing it that's my only point here i know it's gonna seem like i'm talking down on blame me i'm not this was the dynamic right here that shows us as black women what our submission is going to cost us. And I ain't going to do it. You know, we see a lot of black women that are standing up to the powers that be. You see it with Serena Williams, you know, with the whole jumpsuit thing. You know, we see it with, um, you know, some of our black female gymnasts pushing back and saying, listen, I'm not going to be put into positions that make me feel uncomfortable for the sake of competition. You know, we saw Naomi Osaka standing up to, um, you know, interviewers and things like that. You know, these female athletes are setting a different precedence on what, even in the athletic space, black people should be expected to submit to. and. You'll notice, too, because, you know, I try to be fair. I'm accused of injustice all the time, but I try to be fair. In all fairness, we also don't see the pushback on these black women either. You know, most of these black women, when they speak up to the powers that be, they're celebrated for it. So I do think there is something to look at there as well, black women in the dynamic, because we are able to speak to power in ways that black men can't. And I can only imagine how emasculating that can be for them as men. But we didn't start the fire. We didn't create this system. If they really want to be upset about feeling emasculated, they need to take that to the white man. Until they stand up to him, there's no amount of submitting to them we can do that's going to give them their dignity back. I talked about that in my <laughs> So You Want to Be a Wife episode when it came to side chicks. And it's the same thing when it comes to white supremacy. Black men can make that their side chick. 
<laughs> and then bring all their vitriol home to their wives, which are black women. But we will never be able to give them their dignity back until they take all that smoke to another male group. Because that male group is letting even their women <laughs> talk to and treat black men like that. You being gaslit, women. I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. You're being gaslit, black women. This is how they're treated inside of those intimate relationships. This is how they're treated when they show up for Thanksgiving. This is how they're treated when they're doing holidays in the Hamptons. But like we have, they've been, a, they've been, there's a lot of black men that, and I'm not saying many, I'm just saying a lot of them that have been willing to trade out their dignity for luxury. We seen it with the house Negroes on the plantation. This nigga here? That nigga there. Do not let those people gaslight you into thinking there's liberation in that. This is what that looks like. <laughs> when you melt it down to the basics of what it really is. Listen, I don't think I'm right about everything, but I do think what I say has merit. I think I got a point. And if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments for me. I, I look forward to engaging with you there. I really do. Uh, if you message me, I message you back. If you email me, I email you back. If you say something slick, <laughs> you go high, baby, I go to the heavens. But I will respond. And until the next transmission, you're dismissed. Go ahead and clock out for me. It is always us versus them. <laughs>